Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble, and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. With these words, our founding fathers set the stage for a new type of nation, one where dissent, debate, and protest were to be championed rather than suppressed. The First Amendment set the stage for a nation that depended on its citizens to hold power to account and call for change when needed, recognizing that the ultimate guardians of liberty are the people themselves. Throughout history, the world has been shaped for the better by those bold enough to challenge the status quo. Whether that meant writing an article criticizing the royal governor of New York, picketing the White House and going to jail, or inspiring a nation to live up to its ideals on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Under authoritarian regimes, however, those who criticize the powerful are often punished or imprisoned. And as recent events have shown, the repercussions for doing so can include inhumane punishment and even death. The Liberty Medal honors individuals of courage and conviction who strive to secure the blessings of liberty to people around the globe. This year's recipients have put their reputations, their safety, and their lives on the line to advance the values of freedom and liberty. Hello, friends. I'm Jeffrey Rosen, and welcome to the National Constitution Center's 2021 Liberty Medal. I'm here at the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia, where we bring together people from across the country and around the world to learn about, debate, and celebrate the greatest vision of human freedom in history, the U.S. Constitution. Every year, as part of our nonpartisan mission of constitutional education, we present the Liberty Medal to honor those who strive to secure the blessings of liberty to people around the globe. This year, we're honored to award the Liberty Medal to two international freedom fighters, the Saudi women's rights activist, Lujain al Hathloul, and the Hong Kong pro-democracy activist, Jimmy Lai. Both have been imprisoned for exercising their fundamental rights of free speech and dissent. They exemplify the crucial importance of the freedoms guaranteed by the First Amendment and the global struggle between liberal democracies and illiberal authoritarianism. Ms. al Hathloul was held for nearly three years in a Saudi prison for leading the campaign to legalize driving for women in Saudi Arabia. Mr. Lai's arrest on charges of violating Hong Kong's sweeping national security law that criminalizes sedition arose out of his longstanding support of the pro-democracy movement and press freedom in Hong Kong. Today's ceremony is not an ordinary Liberty Medal presentation. Our two honorees are unable to be with us in person to accept the award. Although released from prison in February, Ms. Ahathul's freedoms continue to be restricted by the Saudi government. Mr. Lai remains in jail in Hong Kong. Their absence is a powerful reminder of the great personal sacrifices both have made for fighting for freedom against tyranny. أهلاً معكم لجينا الهذلول أنا الآن في طريق القويفات بحاول أقطع الحدود السعودية من هناك قد أسوق بسيارة Hong Kong people, we have to save Hong Kong by the people We can't rely on the government anymore The government is becoming more and more like the Chinese government I look at the Saudi state-led advancements in a positive and negative way. Uh, the positive is that it's quick. It comes in one night. But it depends on a one man's will. Whenever this man changes his opinion, he can eliminate all this. How uh, can we protect our rights and all these advancements with such a system? I've stopped thinking what they would do to me if I do this, if I say this. If I have to think every time the consequences of what I do and what I say, I can't do anything. That is a constant threat for us on social media. So as soon as we express ourselves, we never know 
when we will be stopped. Is everything you're saying here, sir, actually a violation of this new security law? Yes. Is there not a chance that you could be spirited away in the middle of the night to a prison in mainland China? Yes. But what can I do? Just keep quiet? It's scary. I'm not saying it's not scary, but I'm continuing. I am not stopping. I'm stepping, shaking while stepping, yes, but I'm not giving up. Those institutions of rule of law, free press, private property and all that are the safeguards of our freedom. We must keep them. Liu Jane spent a thousand and one days in prison. Her crime? Fighting for women's rights in Saudi Arabia. Uh, appalling news out of Hong Kong, where under the new secretly drafted national security law, police arrested a pro-democracy media mogul named Jimmy Lai. A Chinese crackdown that has seen journalists at Apple Daily led away in handcuffs. The paper forced to shut down. This is the latest attempt by China to silence free speech and dissent in Hong Kong as it tries to exert control over the region. China's authoritarian leader now determining Hong Kong's future with an iron fist. Lu Jin comes from a very privileged family. She was traveling and studying and uh, living a good life. She thought it was her duty to not only enjoy it, but to make sure everyone in the country can have the life she's leading. Lu Jin is most known for her uh, activism around uh, trying to get uh, the right to drive. Uh, for women in Saudi Arabia, something that's been denied of them. She's also very well known for her activism around changing the male guardianship laws. She's an inspiration to millions of, of Saudi women. Jimmy Lai is this made-for-television personality, this extraordinary figure. Jimmy Lai was the only major Hong Kong businessman who had the guts to stand up and openly support the pro-democracy movement, both before and during the protests of 2019. After uh, 1989 and the Tiananmen Square massacre, he became increasingly concerned with human rights issues. He started the scrappy tabloid Apple Daily. It was a little bit salacious, but more and more it got into politics and he said bold things that no one else dared to say. The government is becoming more and more like the Chinese government. I don't think that Liu Jain set out to be this international icon, this leader of the Saudi women's rights movement. She was frankly just kind of pissed off that she couldn't drive. She'd studied in Canada, she knew what women were capable of doing and to be treated like a second-class citizen unable to drive, it just irritated her. The fact that women cannot um, drive is symbolically that they cannot move. They cannot move socially, they cannot really be the masters of the path that they want to take. In 2014, Lu Jain used to live in the Emirates and she tried to cross the border to Saudi Arabia filming herself when women were not allowed to drive yet. She put this video out. Anything could have happened to her. She was arrested for 73 days and let go. And then anything did happen to her. I interviewed Jimmy Lai in 2019 in November at the peak of the student protest. His paper was in the forefront of pushing for freedom of speech and rule of law and freer elections. I remember just being really struck by the guts of this guy. And he didn't know better than anybody else what was going to happen. But he was willing to put his neck on the line to fight for Hong Kong and to fight for democracy in the region. And the Chinese government in Beijing hated him for it. They pictured him as the black hand behind peaceful demonstrations. They wanted to get him. He knew it, but it wouldn't stop him until now.
In May 2018, they broke into our house in Riyadh. Uh, they took Lujain. She was held in incommunicado for three weeks. And during that time, there are no charges, only the media saying that she's a traitor, that she's a foreign agent, that you know she will get the, the highest penalty, which is basically the death penalty or a life sentence. When you are lost in that prison system, you have nowhere to turn to. You feel completely powerless. And yet, Lu Jane found the guts to resist. At one point, she went on hunger strike to demand the right to speak to her family. And so in August 2018, they bring her back to the official prison, and my parents are allowed to see her. We started to hear reports of you know, people getting torture in unofficial centers. And so during the visit, my parents told Lujain, we read reports, we know what happened. And then that's when she told my parents that during the months where she was held in the unofficial prison, she was being tortured. She was flogged, waterboarded, um, electrocuted. One of the men who was there is um, Saud al-Qahtani, who's basically the crown prince's right-hand man. And he was the one sexually harassing her, threatening, threatening her with uh, rape with murder. He even told her that um, if he wanted to, he could cut her body into pieces and put her in, in the switch system and no one would know about it. Jimmy was initially arrested for participating in illegal protests, which means pro-democracy protests. And then the authorities took a far harsher step in August 2020 when they arrested him and charged him with violating the national security law, which involved everything from social media posts to meeting with, uh, with foreign officials. The national security law limits Beijing's judicial autonomy. It's meant to make clear to the Hong Kong population that even though they were entitled to 50 years of one country, two systems, they're not that different from mainland China, and they're not going to be treated that differently. This was an effort by Xi Jinping to fire a cannon shot across the bow of Hong Kong and to remind everybody that if we can go after Jimmy Lai, then we can go after any of you. Nobody is safe. He is not a revolutionary trying to upend the government in Beijing. He is fighting for the right to express his ideas and for the right of Hong Kong pro-democrats to express their ideas and for the right of people to make up their own mind. He wanted to fight to protect the city that had done so much for him. And ultimately, he has been willing to risk his freedom and perhaps his life to defend it. He told me once that if he had to go to prison, then that maybe was his role in life, his way of finding fulfillment and doing his part for Hong Kong. I was sitting with a ship because this place gave me everything. A month after Lu Jane's arrest, uh, the government had taken the decision to lift the driving ban. The lifting of the, the ban on driving was something um, that they did very begrudgingly. And once it was lifted, uh, there was going to be a price to pay for activists like Lu Jane. And from May 2018 till March 2019, there was no trial, no official charges. And then in March 2019, they finally called her and uh, handed the, the, the charges. So the charges literally um, are about her activism. Whenever there's been any sort of uh, change of a policy in Saudi Arabia as a response to public pressure and, and activism, there has been an inevitable backlash against those people who have been driving that change. So so it's sort of the Saudi government's response to those demanding change, saying, OK, we hear your demands, but we're still in charge. We still decide who walks free in our society. They sentenced her to five years and eight months with a three-year probation. She was falsely imprisoned uh, for, for things that the uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's government thought were threatening. The most symbolic uh, action she's done while she was in prison was when they offered Lu Jane um, to release her if she signs and publicly states that she was not torture. 
and she refused this. Those of us who have been tortured physically, psychologically, oftentimes are compelled to be quiet about it. Speaking about it is perhaps the most heroic thing that she can do because undoubtedly other people are facing the same fate right now. And her refusing to agree to not talk about that, it makes it harder for them to torture their next victim. I'm so glad that we are honoring people like Lou Jane and Jimmy, and partly that's because the more we honor them, perhaps we can help mitigate the consequences to them and reduce the prospect that they are tortured or imprisoned down the road. It's also a way to raise the cost of repression, not only in Saudi Arabia and China, but in other countries around the world, to remind dictators that there are real costs that they will face when they behave this way. Advocates and freedom fighters like Lou Jane and Jimmy have a very important role to play for future generations. We're at this pivotal moment um, where democratic ideals are, I hate to say it, but on shakier ground than it has been in a very long time. And to have people like Lou Jane and Jimmy fighting for these core principles gives me hope that that struggle, that fight uh, will spread to other corners of the globe. It already exists everywhere. Uh, although authoritarians try and stamp it out, strong-armed governments that don't respect uh, basic freedoms are afraid of people like Jimmy and Lou Jane. And they should be. On behalf of the National Constitution Center, it is my honor to award the 33rd Liberty Medal to two heroes of liberty, Ujain Al-Hafloul and Jimmy Lai. Their powerful stories, told through the voices of their family, friends, journalists, and supporters, exemplify their courage in fighting for the universal values of freedom of speech and conscience. Ujain Al-Hafloul, you have advocated on behalf of your fellow Saudi women for equal protection and human rights. You have fought against tyranny through nonviolent resistance and peaceful dissent to defend the universal values of liberty across the globe. You have exemplified resolve in the fight for freedom through your great personal sacrifice. And you have served as a beacon of light to women fighting for equal rights across the globe. For your service to the ideals of equal rights and liberty for all, it is a great honor for the National Constitution Center to award you the 2021 Liberty Medal. Jimmy Lai, you have fought for freedom of speech and freedom of the press, fundamental rights essential to the flourishing of liberal democracies. You have sacrificed your own freedom and well being in order to help secure the blessings of liberty for others. And you have rejected the idea that criticism of a government can legitimately be punished as sedition, inspiring others to continue for fighting for freedom in Hong Kong. For your service to the ideals of liberty and the promise of freedom, it is a great honor for the National Constitution Center to award you the 2021 Liberty Medal. Although Lu Jane al Hathlul and Jimmy Lai cannot be with us this evening to accept the award and are barred from speaking out for their causes, we're honored to have Lujain al Hathlul's sister, Lena al Hathlul, accepting on her behalf, and Ambassador James B. Cunningham, former Consul General for Hong Kong and Macau, accepting on behalf of Jimmy Lai. Hi, everyone. Today, my sister Lujain has been awarded the 2021 Liberty Medal. I first want to thank the National Constitution Center for granting this award to Lujain. 
I want to also thank and acknowledge the work of the numerous activists, civil society, and international organizations who continue to fight for Lujain's unconditional freedom. I would also like to thank and recognize the incredible work of Jimmy Lay, who, like my sister, has been sentenced for his work and fight for freedom. Today, I am proudly representing my sister. However, I should not be the one speaking. Lujain cannot be present to receive this award, not because she's busy with her activism or private life. No, Lujain is not here because she's under a travel ban and forbidden from speaking in public. My sister has been released from prison, but she is not free. Because of her activism, Lujain was kidnapped from the Emirates, deprived of finishing her master's degree, illegally imprisoned, brutally tortured, put in solitary confinement for months, and sentenced as a terrorist to five years and eight months. For years now, the Saudi regime has been trying to tarnish her image, to erase any support, and to make her forgotten. But the more time passes, the more Lujain proves to the world how incredibly brave, resilient, and attached to her values she is. Lujain has now become a symbol of human rights defenders in Saudi Arabia. A symbol because there are thousands of detainees going through what she has been through. But silence has become the norm in our country. A police state that will even imprison relatives trying to save their loved ones. Families are put under a travel ban and forced into silence. Thankfully, some of us are out of the country and free to speak, free to become Lujain's silenced voice. We have taken the oath not to betray her, but to fight with her till the end and to expose this injustice. Respected trustees and friends of the National Constitution Center and members of the international community our voices alone are not enough. The world needs to recognize her sacrifices, to know who Lujain is, and to help us elevate the case. Lujain is a symbol of the gross injustice of Saudi Arabia. She represents one of thousands of cases of women who have been silenced in different ways, either by the government because of their activism or by their male garden because they have spoken out against domestic violence. We as a family, are public and loud because we have no choice. We urge you to continue your fight and hold Saudi Arabia accountable for its numerous injustices and call to truly free my sister Lujain from all the constraints to lift the travel ban on my family and the relatives of all activists. Thank you. On behalf of Jimmy Lai, I want to thank the National Constitution Center for the high honor of presenting him with the 2021 Liberty Medal. Mr. Lai, of course, cannot be here to accept the award himself. He, along with many others in Hong Kong, is a prisoner of conscience. Mr. Lai has received special attention. Since December, he has been held without bail under the national security law, sentenced for participating in peaceful pro-democracy rallies, and the Hong Kong authorities seized his business and property without anything resembling due process. His offense, being a successful Hong Kong media figure who defends freedom of speech, liberty, and democratic values in the face of mounting repression. Mr. Lai would want me to note that he himself is not important. It is the values he represents and the struggle to advance those values of people in Hong Kong and elsewhere in China, which matter. For many of us, it is a tragedy that the rule of law and freedom of thought, education, speech, and property are being extinguished in Hong Kong at the behest of Beijing. This is not the Hong Kong I knew and admired when I was the US Consul General there. For Mr. Lai, the threat to the values that made Hong Kong a unique part of China was a call to action, peaceful action at great personal risk. It was, he said, in his character to stay and fight when he could have chosen otherwise. My character, he said, is my destiny, and his character is to fight for liberty. Thank you again for this medal in recognition of Jimmy Lai's commitment to liberty and to his willingness to pay the price of defending it. 
Let us hope he will be free to join us again someday soon. In 1785, James Madison explained why freedom of conscience is, in its nature, an unalienable right, one that can't be surrendered or alienated to any king, president, or government. It is unalienable, Madison wrote, because the opinions of men, depending only on the evidence contemplated by their own minds, cannot follow the dictates of other men. In other words, we are endowed by our Creator with reasoning minds that no government or individual can successfully control. We form our opinions based on reason and evidence, and any efforts to coerce our thoughts and beliefs will ultimately fail. Tyrannical governments may try to imprison their critics or tell their citizens what to think, but no state, no matter how tyrannical, can succeed in preventing us from thinking for ourselves. Lujain Al-Hathlul and Jimmy Lai sacrificed their physical freedom and personal well-being in fighting for freedom of conscience, the most fundamental of all rights. Here at the National Constitution Center, our mission is to increase awareness and understanding of the Constitution among the American people. Through constitutional education about the freedoms protected by the First Amendment and the entire U.S. Constitution, we aim to inspire people across America and around the globe to learn about liberty so that like our heroic Liberty Medal recipients, they can muster the courage to defend it. Thank you to our partners at Comcast and NBC Universal for making this night possible as well as this evening's major underwriters, Ira Lubert and Pamela Stein, Citizens Bank and Stradley Rona, and the many individuals, corporations, and foundations who support the Liberty Medal and the work of the National Constitution Center. Thanks to the family, friends, and supporters of Lou Jane Al-Hathlul and Jimmy Lai, who've made this tribute so meaningful. Finally, thanks to all of you who are watching at home. To learn more about the U.S. Constitution, please visit the National Constitution Center online at constitutioncenter.org. With our interactive constitution, podcasts, videos, debates, and Constitution 101 classes, you'll find everything you need for a lifetime of learning about the greatest vision of human freedom in history, the U.S. Constitution. <laughs>